Nearly 400 people have joined Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority after it merged with a government-backed organization. NRA officials want to boost their ability to conduct safety assessments of nuclear facilities. Nuclear Regulation Authority Chairman Shunichi Tanaka welcomed the staff from the Japan Nuclear Energy Safety Organization. He said expectations are high for the new members as they have high-level skills and expertise. I would like you to do your best so our organization can gain the trust of the people as a regulatory body. The merger was planned in the wake of the 2011 nuclear accident in Fukushima. Nuclear regulators at the time were criticized for lacking expertise. The addition almost doubles the staff of the NRA secretariat. Many of the newly joined engineers are retirees of nuclear plant makers. The regulators are now examining safety measures at nuclear power plants across Japan. A safety screening is a prerequisite for resuming nuclear power generation. All reactors in the country are currently offline. Japan's education ministry officials have revised teaching materials they made after the nuclear accident in Fukushima. They want students to learn more about the impact of the disaster, in addition to getting basic knowledge of radiation. The ministry originally published booklets in October 2011, about six months after the disaster. But many teachers complained that the material lacked sufficient information on the accident itself. The new booklets show how radioactive materials spread from the plant. They also show the current evacuation zones. They also explain how rumors about the disaster hurt the farming and tourism industries. Ministry officials say they hope the materials will help students better understand the situation in Fukushima and make an informed judgment. They will distribute the booklets to schools in April. They will also soon post them online.
Japanese authorities are extending the time limit on patents for regener regenerative medicine. They want to take advantage of the lead they have in the development of iPS cells. The government has made regenerative medicine a pillar of its growth strategy, but development costs are huge and take time to recoup. Japan patent officials say they'll extend the term on the patents by up to five years. This will allow companies developing products to sell them exclusively for a longer period, some for up to 25 years. The main products will be artificial skin and organs grown from iPS cells. Patent officials say they'll revise the relevant statute. Uh, they'll revise the relevant statutes later this through year. Events in northeastern Japan three years ago will never forget them. The disaster made it difficult for reporters at one local newspaper to keep publishing their work, but that didn't stop them from telling their stories. Kahoku Shinpo is a newspaper in Sendai with a circulation of 450,000. Its coverage area includes several coastal towns that were destroyed in the earthquake and tsunami. The quake shook the newsroom hard, literally and figuratively. Operations ground to a halt. Hideya Terashima is Kahoku Shinpo's senior writer. We asked ourselves what we could do and decided to use SNS. It was an experiment for us. The newspaper began posting stories on social networking services like Twitter and Facebook. People all over Japan began following Kahoku Shinpo's coverage of the quake and its aftermath. The 2011 disaster totally changed the way local newspapers operate. Terashima writes a blog titled, Making a Newspaper Amid Aftershocks. He thinks people outside the area may find it hard to understand the challenges facing local communities. We need to get the inside story to keep what happened fresh in people's minds. Before our interview ends, Terashima shares an essay written by Marie Yamanaka. She's a junior high school student from Fukushima. The disaster that struck us in Fukushima was a once-in-a-thousand-year event. It totally changed our lives. We've already paid a huge price. We mustn't forget what we went through so we can prepare for the next disaster. Otherwise, our experience will have been in vain. Now I'm trying to find ways to help. Everyone can find help in their own way. Let's think and work together so we'll have a better Fukushima in 10 or 20 years. Don't forget about us. Let's think together about what we can do. These are the messages I'd like to convey. On the Marshall Islands have gathered for a memorial service. They were marking the 60th anniversary of the U.S. hydrogen bomb test on Bikini Atoll. About 100 people attended the event in the capital, Majuro, on Saturday. They included people who were exposed to radiation from the nuclear test and government officials from Bikini and Rongelap atolls. An 80-year-old Japanese survivor of the test also attended. Matashichi Oishi was exposed to the fallout from the test on board a fishing boat, the Fukuryu Maru No. 5, along with 22 crew members. The production of nuclear weapons victimized many people in the Marshall Islands. I want world leaders to search their souls seriously. I'm sure it touches all the hearts of the Makarola-based people. The country's president, Christopher Loyak, stressed the importance of cooperation between his country and Japan, as the islanders and the Japanese fishermen shared the same tragedy. The Fukuryu Maru No. 5 has been put on display in Tokyo. Nearly 1,000 Japanese fishing boats were operating in nearby waters at the time. Twenty-three crew members of the vessel were exposed to radiation. One of them died six months later. Following mounting calls for its preservation, the ship was brought to a facility in Tokyo to be put on display. The 28-meter vessel, as well as contaminated coral dust and ashes, attracted many visitors to the exhibit. The details of the incident were shocking. Things like this should never occur.
Some of the suffering by the victims was too horrible to behold, but it's important to know what really happened, so I'm glad I came. Little is known about the impact of the explosion on the crew members' health, as there are few state records on the matter. Barely a week, representatives of the new Ukrainian government are already threatening to literally go nuclear if they don't get their way. A deputy from the Svoboda party warns that Kiev could go back on its own constitution and restock its nuclear arsenals within six months. RT's Anastasia Cherkina reports. Double standards galore. Washington suffers sleepless nights and paranoia when it comes to the nuclear capabilities of countries like Iran. Iran's nuclear program. Iran's nuclear program. Iran's nuclear program. But the U.S. turns a blind eye when it comes to provocative statements coming out of Kiev. One member of the Ukrainian parliament's ultra-nationalist Svoboda party warned that if Russia doesn't tread carefully, it will be dealing with a nuclear power. That's the rhetoric despite Ukraine signing up to the International Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty of 1994. There is a double standard when it comes to the way that the United States deals with a supposed nuclear threat from Iran. Uh, which, let's not forget, there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that Iran intends to develop nuclear weapons uh, for, for uh, aggressive military purposes. Unlike Iran, the warning from the Ukrainian lawmaker includes an actual deadline of just a few months. This in a conflict-torn country where even the most pessimistic predictions ended up becoming a reality. But none of that seems to disturb the U.S. The money that we can't use to feed uh, the, the poor and the hungry in the United States and in Europe that money is going to support Nazis in Ukraine with nuclear ambitions who are looking to destabilize the region and whose sole goal is the destruction of Russia. Yet another example of hypocrisy flying high from the country that touts itself as the world's leading democracy. Anastasia Cherkina, RT, New York. And Martin Safe from the Globalist Research Center, think tank here, told us that the threat is probably a bluff, but a bit of a worry nonetheless. These threats are probably extreme and irresponsible bluff, but uh, it's very alarming to hear them being made in the first place. The new government, which has now emerged in Ki Kiev, and other figures, like this, the opposition statement, need to act in a responsible manner to earn the deserved respect and trust and cooperation of the international community. That comment is disastrously counterproductive and should be seen as such. 